First of all, let's hear it for the Clancy family, for everybody behind the Gary Clancy Wildlife Management Area, huh? All right. This has been, this has been four years in the making, and it's, it's just beautiful. I can't believe how much this property has changed already since Aaron Sanquist introduced Nancy and, and myself and some other folks to it. What made this property really attractive to acquire was its kind of diversity and habitat. Um, so we've, you know, since developed it, about 105 acres of it was cropland. Um, it's a total of 100, about 168 acres. So we have, you know, hardwood forests um, with a lot of oak mast, a lot of deer, a lot of turkeys on this property. We have behind us, we have uh, one, one uh, river bottom land with bottomland hardwood forests. And then on a lot of the cropland acres around, that you can see on both sides of this, we developed into native prairie habitat. Since 2009, Pheasants Forever landowners, landowners at Pheasants Forever has worked with, have donated over $10 million worth of land value to projects like this. So just think about that for one moment. How many more acres have we created as a, as a community and collectively of wildlife habitat that's open to the public because of not only their patience and their willingness to work through those processes, but to actually put their money where their mouth is too. You know, Gary through his lifestyle, his words, his actions, um, he meant so much to so many people. Um, uh, I, I, I remember opening the outdoor news and skipping past all of the, the columns to go read <laughs> Gary's because I was so, Intrigued. I just want to know what Gary had to say on that Thursday, um, and it killed me if if I didn't get the outdoor news till Friday because of the mail. Um, not, and I'm not kidding. Uh, it, it's getting worse, by the way. <laughs> it's getting worse. It's, and so you guys, you know, like like Rob said, we met with Lee and, and Nancy, and and you guys instantly knew that this project was Gary. Um, you know, someone who could go out with the Britneys and and uh, hunt pheasants, who could go down and, and chase waterfall in the river. Um, a true sportsman, and, and you know he was a role model to so many folks. And you've been so supportive and so generous in helping us and helping so many people here tonight, and so many folks that couldn't be that also contributed. Do our part to help honor Gary and his legacy and, and what he all meant to all of us. So thank you for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. Um, first of all, just thank you, everybody. This is incredible. Everyone that's out here now. Pretty magical what can happen with a bunch of people putting their minds together mm -hmm. so thank you but for various reasons Gary preferred to hunt alone and after hunting with him for a few years I learned it was just because there wasn't anyone that could keep up with him <laughs> exceptional Larry his brother-in-law so when I showed up to the Clancy family I was in my early 20s dating Gary's youngest daughter <laughs> You might imagine um, it took a while to get an invite to go hunting with him. <laughs> but when it did come, I was eager, and I took him up on it, and we headed to a WMA south of Stewartville. And I'm not kidding you, no sooner than we got out of the truck and the dog's uh, paws touched the ground, I looked behind me, and Gary was striding across that field going about 10 miles an hour. <laughs> So I'm practically sprinting through there trying to catch up with him. And I'm sweating. I've got blue stem seed and cattail fuzz stuck to my face. I'm just a mess. And when I finally get up to him, he's standing there stopped, looking very focused. And I almost stumbled into his dog, Duke, on point. So I look at Gary, he gives me a nod, like I should know what I'm doing, and I didn't. <laughs> I just kept walking. <laughs> sure enough, that rooster flew up. <laughs> and with what was the most panicked, furry, ugly shot ever, I hit it. <laughs> with a youth 20 gauge. So, we go up, grab the bird, pick it up. It was dead, actually. I put it in my vest and get a swat on my back that almost knocked me over. <laughs> and kind of a sly nod, nothing was said, and then boom, he was off again. Well, 10 miles an hour. Speaking of that, this is that tail feather from my first bird. Wow. I've 
had it for oh, going on 10 years now. The memory of my first pheasant hunt was made possible because somebody before us understood the importance of protecting our public hunting rights, public hunting lands. And this parcel, the Gary Clancy WMA, will play a part in making memories for so many ordinary people. A little boy will shoot his first pheasant here. A little girl will harvest her first whitetail along that river. And the new hunter will hear their first turkey gobble up on that hillside. And it's likely that many of those people enjoying their first experiences out here will help contribute to ensuring access to public lands for future generations, just as we're doing today in Gary's honor. And all that is to simply say Gary would be very proud of us. Oh, great job. Um, today is not just a celebration of Gary, but I think of everyone here who helped build this new wildlife area in his name for future generations of guys who come back from conflicts overseas and need a place to find some peace and, and solitude. That's what was going through everybody's mind when we thought we need to create the Gary Clancy Wildlife Management Area. And it's Thanks to Lee and Kelly and everybody else that has been so clear here today. I got one final challenge for all of you. It's something Gary would have done. Gary probably would have been fed up at this point with all this talk. Use this land. Come on out here, enjoy it. It's a beautiful piece of property. Show everybody that public lands are important and celebrate Gary's life by enjoying this property. Thank you everybody for being here.